The Significance of Air Monitoring, a Case Study Employers are required to conduct a thorough hazard assessment of their workplaces before workers enter a work area. The sources of hydrogen sulfide release or production must be identified and the potential for worker exposure to the toxic gas should be quantified. Once the potential for exposure is evaluated, hazard controls can be instituted that provide the required level of protection against the anticipated exposure levels. In order to fully understand the significance of hazard assessment and air monitoring on a worksite, let us consider the example of a 30-year-old police officer who drowned after being overcome by hydrogen sulfide gas as he attempted to rescue a construction worker. The site of the fatality was on a coastal barrier island on which a sewer pumping station was being built. A pit 27 feet deep and 15 feet wide by 15 feet long had been dug in marshy ground to accommodate this. Due to the nature of the land, pockets of hydrogen sulfide gas are common. Unsecured ladders were located at the east and north sides of the excavation to provide for entry and exit from the excavation. A pump was activated to continuously pump water out of the hole, turning the pump off would result in the hole filling with water. On the day of the incident, work began at 7 a.m. It was a hot and humid day. Workers were driving the test piling into the base of the pit for the foundation of the sewage pumping station. Workers were in and out of the excavation and reportedly described boiling of water and sand at the base of the piling, presumably from the release of gases. Workers also reported smelling the characteristic rotten egg odor of hydrogen sulfide as they went to the bottom of the pit. Some reportedly became short of breath at times. Two construction company members left the site to obtain a blower in order to ventilate the 27-foot pit. A foreman remembered he had a gas detection badge and air purifying respirator in his personal vehicle. He put on both of those only to realize that the badge contained no paper so he took it off. Around 9 a.m., realizing that the boiling could lead to collapse of the excavation, the foreman alerted the crew and ordered all workers out of the pit. Worker number one returned to the pit bottom to retrieve the water jet that was tied to the lower wallet and was overcome by the hydrogen sulfide down there. Worker number two went into the pit to rescue him and was also overcome and became unconscious. One of the workers on site called 911 stating that a man had collapsed in the pit but failed to mention the release of the toxic gas. A police officer was the first responder to the scene, followed by two other police officers and other municipal employees. The first responding officer observed an unconscious construction worker being hoisted out of the pit by the crane and his co-worker. The emergency medical personnel on the scene administered first aid and CPR to the worker who had been rescued out of the pit. The officer then observed another laborer lying unresponsive in the excavation. The three police officers on the scene entered the pit in an attempt to rescue the unconscious worker. No one attempted to stop the police officers from entering the excavation. This is because a number of workers were ill and incoherent from inhaling the gas, while others had fled the site to protect themselves from the toxic gas. As the police officers descended down the pit, one of them smelled the gas and recognized it as hydrogen sulfide from his experience at other sites. Two of them were able to successfully ascend the ladder but needed a lot of assistance to climb out of the excavation because they were already experiencing physical symptoms of weakness and lack of coordination from inhaling hydrogen sulfide. The third officer, who was also experiencing weakness from exposure to the gas, attempted to climb the ladder but he fell, missed the ledge, and landed at the bottom of the excavation. The pump had been turned off earlier and there was now about 4 inches of water in the pit. As co-workers and rescuers watched helplessly, water level in the pit kept rising and drowned the officer. He was evacuated from the pit by firefighters wearing air packs who attached him to the crane and lifted him out. The unconscious construction worker was also evacuated by the firefighters. CPR on the police officer was unsuccessful and he was pronounced dead at the hospital. The unconscious construction worker was admitted to the hospital where he remained in a coma for five days. In addition to the victims who were seriously injured or killed, 
Many of the rescuers were also ill, experiencing weakness and vomiting. Several area residents were also observed in the emergency room for exposure to the toxic gas. So, what could have been done differently on this worksite to prevent the tragic death of the police officer and dozens of others who were exposed to the toxic gas? The following are a few work practices and hazard controls that employers must institute at work sites with potential hydrogen sulfide exposures. All excavations with the potential for an oxygen deficient or hazardous atmosphere should be monitored by the company controlling the site before personnel entry, and then periodically during the job to ensure that the atmosphere remains safe. If air monitoring had been ongoing, hydrogen sulfide and other gases would have been detected before reaching dangerous levels. Workers could have been removed from the excavation along with any tools, which would have prevented the need to have any rescuers on the site. The employer controlling the excavation site should provide and ensure that employees use fall protection and safety harnesses with retrieval lines. If safety harnesses with attached retrieval lines had been worn by workers in this 27-foot deep excavation, the stricken laborer could have been rescued and immediately removed from the hazardous area of the pit. There would have been no need for police officers and other emergency responders to have entered the excavation. Police, rescue, and fire departments should implement a general safety program designed to help rescuers recognize, understand, and control hazards affecting them. Rescuers are trained to help others, but they should be able to recognize environmental situations in which they must overcome their urge to act immediately and instead first assess the danger to themselves as well as others.